All right, guys, uh, this is Primo doing a little VOD review on your two games tonight. So we're going to go over a few things. Um, we're actually going to go over a lot of things. And we're going to start with actual drafts, uh, your draft strategies and everything like that. I obviously don't know your guys' champion pool at all. Um, but one thing, it, no matter what team you are, you need to keep up with the meta. And it looks like you guys play these three champions, which which is good. They're good meta picks. But you should never be worried about, like, the fifth-ranked AD carry in terms of power. I understand she can be a really strong lane bully, but she shouldn't be a ban. Um, when I looked at them briefly right before the game, even though it didn't matter for game one, it mattered for game two. I immediately thought that Tom Kent should be this last band since I don't think you guys played it. Um, and it's their support players like best overall um, champion. That's also a very strong meta pick. Um, so whenever you first see a Nico currently right now, she just got nerfed. So the on hit Nico isn't... Um, as prevalent it's it's it got a lot worse than it was but it still can be ran mid or top so this is a flex pick right now and this is a, a point i'm going to make to you guys when we go over the second video a lot too and i'll talk about your champion pulls through this one as well as especially on blue side a strength for any team is to have good flex flex picks like this because the red side gets to counter you no matter what so if you first pick this they don't know where it's going still and then once you get to the second phase of the draft if they decide to try to counter it for mid here the last pick of it of uh the first phase then you can move this to top lane and at least get one counter pick where you get to counter the their mid laner so this is why there's the importance of uh, having flex picks and we'll go over that so you see that they um, first pick the Nico and like I mentioned it's going to be mid or top is the the bottom lane Nico is not really a thing now because of um, the on hit basically got nerfed far enough that the AP Nico was better so um, your response here is you go Alistar, which is perfectly fine. He's a very strong support. Um, but my questioning for you guys is literally the top four AD carries are all available right now. Tristan is not a bad champion by any means, but why are we not picking one of the top four uh, champions? And I'm obviously I don't have your communication uh, as well, so I don't know if you guys have plans for your jungler, which you end up picking here, and then as well as these two picks, since you get uh, to counter. Um, so this, to me, if you have any type of game plan uh, going into this, is A, it's really um, easy for them to counter your entire bottom lane now, because you're showing it right away, and all of the uh, 80 carries are still available so even if they pick an 80 carry here in this phase you guys could still counter it here so um, it's honestly not bad to first pick your whole bottom lane if you're picking for power and this is something I mentioned to Don as well if you guys know that you generally play a lot of triple AD comps, which you do this time with Tristana, Kane, and Riven. The one AD carry that could have been banned instead of even the Tom Kench, like I mentioned, was Ezreal because he's the, he has access to the Frostborn Gauntlet, which is a nightmare for triple AD comps. A, he gets slows. He's he's tankier than most AD carries in the sense that he packs a lot more armor than them. Um, so. This picking your bottom lane together in the first phase is perfectly fine, but it makes more sense if you're just going to pick one of the better AD carries to start here. Just so you can actually, the most important part of, like if you're going to take the bottom lane first, you want to pick a bottom lane that you basically have priority in the lane 
from level one so you can shove them in and then you can assist at the scuttle crabs for your jungler and as and also be able to roam easier so alistar would be able to roam or if you picked a different support you'd be able to roam mid to help or even just roam into the jungle with your jungler to get some vision um so um this is something i would question you guys about um just to find out more about your champion pools but this is honestly, if there's four different 80 carries that are globally considered stronger, that that are still available is my point, um, this should not be a pick here. If you want to pick this, you could still probably pick it here to see if this is different. And then you just take your like strongest jungler basically right here. Whatever you think your most impactful jungler is right away you could do that instead. But like I said, it's not bad to p pick your bottom lane right away as long as you pick one that's basically you can take over the lane and, and basically get priority from the beginning. So then your lane is so much more useful to your jungler. We're gonna go to the next part of the draft here so you can see now they have Janna, you know their support, you still don't know what AD carry they're running, um, as well as uh, their jungler. So this is a very high uh, heavy ganking jungler. So it is very important um, for you guys to really be able to have priority in your lanes, especially the solo lanes, because you need to be able to get deeper vision so you can just track him. So he can't gank you guys as, as easy. Um, and I believe, so we go with um, I really disagreed with this pick when I saw it, as especially as a blind pick. I understand that you want to basically just protect her in the late parts of the game. But when you play competitive, um, especially, I don't know how long a team, how long you guys have been a team. You guys need to really be able to set the tempo of the game. And that's how you win games. It's just basically is setting the tempo. You're the ones that are always being the aggressors. Um, and it's best not to try to scale. So Zillion, no matter who he's versus in lane, is going to take a few levels before he can even usually win the lane. Like he can go even versus a decent amount of people, but it takes him a long time to have full wave clear. So blind picking this, I much preferred your Talia pick that you had the uh, second um, game. A, she could really disengage him with uh, her E as well as get the slowdown because her E will be able to knock him up very easily and then you can push back in the lane um, a lot faster so you can roam at the same time as their mid. So if, if the matchup is Nico versus Zillion, which is what you're picking into, then she has, she has priority in the lane so then she can make an impact and help set the tempo of the game a lot quicker than you can, a lot earlier in the game is what I'm referring to. So we'll go through the, the last part here of the draft and see they end up picking the um, the 180 carry you basically don't want to see in this composition. A, he's very elusive, so it's really hard for Alistar to stick on to him. Um, Tristana can try to get on to him. Obviously, she can out DPS him if you dodge the skill shots. But as far as we're going back to your bans, the Caitlyn ban is just something that you don't need uh, to be banning, honestly. Like if the other guy plays him a lot, you need to know how, as a team how to beat a Caitlyn. And if they want to first pick a Caitlyn, then they're they're gonna lose the draft. Um, but your best pick of the whole draft is this last pick where you pick Riven because Riven is your your honest only tier one champion of this whole uh, draft. Um, Alistar is is close. Um, I still don't consider him like S tier. S tier is what I'm referring to. So Riven is the probably the best champion in the whole draft. Like, so you guys got the best champion in the whole draft um, along with Ezreal. So you guys are kind of tied on power picks, but you don't have priority in any of the, the lanes really, except for early levels of Riven. Um, and the Nunu uh, can, can gank pretty heavily. So the fact that um, 
he's going to be able to, since he's going to have priority mid lane for sure, he's going to be able to do a lot more into the jungle side of um, the map. And then it takes Kane a little while to scale up too. Obviously, he can get some good early ganks off with his uh, going through the walls and everything like that, but it still takes him longer to, to be able to. And you guys make some good plays uh, in the top side of the map, which is what you should have been doing in this um after this draft, you should have been punishing the GP and getting Riven really far ahead. So you guys did a good job of doing that. So we'll try to get into the game now so we can talk about this kind of stuff too. And this is just something I mentioned to any team that I ever helped. Like this this part of the game where as soon as the draft's over, you guys need to be talking about the summoner spells of the enemy team, what your level one plan is, um, what side of the jungle your jungler is going to start, um, communicating to each other if you would like to invade, um, even just for vision, because sometimes that helps out a lot, especially with someone who can gank really early in the game as Nuno. So it might be beneficial to get some some wards down a little deeper as well to, to just make sure we know where he starts and then the jungler's biggest um, job is being able to know the most common clear paths for the jungler so he can call it out as the game is progressing especially in the first like three to five minutes of the game because you need to really help your team just saying i think nunu is on this side of the map even if you don't have vision because you should know their clear path basically the most common clear path obviously it's going to change um there's actually a really cool uh thing last night when genji beat griffin uh their jungler did a very unique clear path um and it ended up getting him both of his buffs when normally zin Zhao would be able to uh take a uh, triple buff from the zack but he did a really unique um clear path because he was trying to outthink the other jungler so this is just some things that you guys need to think about. So we'll get into the game here. It's just your standard five point, um, which is perfectly fine. Um, most important thing is really finding out where the enemy jungler is going to start and then making sure that uh, you call it out. I, I disconnected and came back in. Um, so this is what I was talking about right away in the mid lane that she has priority. She can push in and then the scuttle crabs basically become theirs if we don't know where the Nunu is. Um, so this is a very important part of the game. Um, and this is something you guys need to talk about as well, especially as a bottom lane. You guys can get a kill onto these two, but you have to wait till level three. If you go before level three, you're just, you're basically suiciding Alistar because it's impossible for him to get back out um, so you really need to make sure you have his stun avail available after the combo and this is something that you guys need to learn in specific lanes that you're running of when you actually should be trying to be aggressive in a 2 vs 2 and, and then other factors that we'll get to in, in a little bit here um, so we're not going to watch every moment of the game, but this is something um, as well just to, to note. As you can see, um, we have the Scuttle Crab warded on, on both of these, and we haven't seen Nunu yet, but you're st still fine to be being aggressive here. But I just want you guys to think about that as well, because here's here's exactly what I'm talking about here as well. You guys are trying to level two kill, but we also haven't seen the jungler yet. So you you guys are really, really going all in at like the worst time, especially when you have a scaling um, AD carry. You, you don't have early game aggression. Like I said, you probably could get a kill, but you would have to wait on a whole nother level. So you're only level two. You're under the turret at level two as well. This is just something you need to, you guys need to know, especially when you're in a scaling lane. Um, and if you're playing versus a really good team as well, level one, this Janna will make Alistar's life a nightmare because she can harass him all day. 
So this is just something you guys need to clean up with your communication of understanding when you should be going in uh, and when you should just be farming. Sometimes it's perfectly fine to just farm. And right now, like your team's objective should be getting your Riven fed and then Zillion just wants to farm and scale and you should want to farm and scale unless we get a good gank off from uh, Central. So just keep that in mind. Go and, go and ham like this because here comes... Um, the new new luckily had to jump to get out, but we'll just kind of fast forward a little bit. So now, as you can see, they're getting both of the scuttles as well. A, we died in the uh, bottom lane. Hey, this is actually something we need to talk about is response so if something bad is happening in one area uh for the team so immediately you can see alistair's dead right here and uh new news on this side so if and i'm just going to keep referring to it this way i'm not trying to offend you guys in any way but if you're playing a lot more coordinated team then this would be even more punishment to you guys because literally Jana and nunu would be able to come right up in here so as soon as this happens, you could, uh, you should be able to, you should, as the jungler, you should be looking at what he had or asking your bottom lane what he had. So then you can respond more appropriately. So this becomes a small victory for us in some way. So as soon as this happens right here, uh, Central, you should be asking them, what did Nunu have? And if the answer is just red buff, which he only has red buff, as you can see, then your course should not be coming to this side because they can literally invade you now because it's three versus two and you're just at a big disadvantage. So you should know that this scuttles up still as well as uh, his whole blue side. So this is where you should trade back in a positive way um, for the team because you're going to be getting levels a you're you're getting the levels no matter what still you're getting scuttle for vision you're getting all these camps and then if he doesn't pay attention enough he's just going to get this scuttle and he may not go invade your jungle so this could be like an actual trade back for you guys it's not going to be a 300 goal but it's going to be a, a level experience for you so as soon as something bad happens you can always look to um, find something that's going to turn it into a positive for you guys. Obviously, like the bottom lane's in, in trouble right now because they're going to be a little bit behind, but you can turn this into team advantage. So you wouldn't do Scuttle first. You would do his jungle first, basically. Um, so you could, you would most likely just do blue buff wolves and then Scuttle and leave the Gromp because he'll probably be back on this side by then, and that's perfectly fine. You still get... Uh, um, you get two buffs no matter what, you get the scuttle for vision for your team, and you steal a little bit of his experience. If he ends up coming over to your side of the jungle, all you have to do is ask um, Ali on his way back, is just, just walk through here to see, because he can just head headbutt him away and he won't die. He'll be fine. So just got to think about how we can deny and return of something bad happening when you guys are playing. Sorry, I'm not trying to make this overly wordy or anything, but. And then this is. Um, we we're coming back um, to try to get the bottom lean even again, which is great. As you can see, we're down in farm and everything like that. Um, you have to realize as soon as he comes through, they can see this little star right here. So she's going to put her tornado towards you. So you can start literally walking around instead of walking right at him because you don't have flash. Like no matter what, she's going to hit you with that. Luckily, she walked forward. But I want you guys to think in terms of if these were better players as well, she would immediately put the cue towards you and then be back here a lot further. So then you wouldn't be able to get your combo. I just want you to think about small things like that. Like her positioning and Ezreal's positioning is really poor. Because they can see Kane, Kane's little mark as soon as he hits um, hits the wall. Um, and this 
this ends up being a good kill for us because you guys communicated that you're going to keep going, which is fine. But I just want you guys to think in terms of like, this is a good play for you, but it, it, it could be cleaner is all I'm saying. Because these are just small things that literally are differences between being platinum, diamond, diamond to masters and challenger is just little stuff like this. So it was a good job by you, uh, Central, and good job by you two following up and getting in there. Just make sure uh, you're thinking about that mystic whenever you're uh, trying to set up the gank too. Try to go through. Oh yeah, we can actually go back, I think. So this is something as well. As soon as this, like we were just talking about um, for the jungler for central, whenever we get um, a negative happens, we can still turn a positive into something. So whenever this happens, we have absolute control over the bottom side of the jungle now. We should, um, and um, Dawn is still going back and forth even. As you can see, Nico's really low in mana, and he's half health with decent mana. So this should now turn into vision control from you two. Right here. You guys should um, basically... Um, Central, you can help him shove this next wave, and then you guys just go get vision in the jungle really fast. It doesn't even have to be deep. Um, but this is just going to help your team. Literally, you can get a tri-bush ward, and then we can also um, probably get a ward deeper up into this this section as a group. Because no matter what now, um, you'll find out where Nunu is by putting this vision in here, and it helps the, the bottom lane stay safe for longer. And the best places for wards actually, um, for Nunu specifically, he can lane gank. So it's actually best to get uh, a ward basically in the lane between the turrets as well as um, this bottom uh, brush here where a lot of people pink ward towards the end of the game. And then um, hopefully later in the lane, if there's a good back timing, we can get vision on this side as well. So this is just, remember, every time there's a little, there's something that bad happens, you can look how you can deny them or gain a small advantage or if you get an advantage like this, you guys should be shoving, helping shove in this wave when it gets up here. So um, uh, Paradeans uh, back timing can be on points um, where he can just basically come back to lane and the wave should be matching in the middle because Ezru won't be able to stay in the lane versus all three of you. He'll have to back up at least until you clear it. And then we get vision control. Vision control, especially deep vision, whenever we have opportunities, is how you win games by just being able to track the enemy jungler. Because then we know when we can be aggressive, when we need to counter gank or counter roam, things of that nature. So just think of that stuff whenever you guys get advantages or like I talked about earlier, of, of if something bad happens, you can still deny them. Okay, and then this is a common thing too. Um for teams is he's out of mana and he's basically the wave is just shoving back into him non-stop he needs help getting out of this lane so he can go by he has tp so at some point don you have to call for central excuse me central to come help you because you need to get back to base and buy something so you can at least replenish your mana and stay stay safe because you you have no way of defending yourself at all and if he's nowhere near that he can help you you honestly just need to surrender this 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 wave and go back i know it sucks because it's a cannon minion wave but this is where bad things happen because you have no way of defending yourself and this is just something you need to realize or you need to call for help earlier so this stuff doesn't happen and then also central would be able to help you out but luckily we're getting um Oh, this is this is great timing actually. So this is something that needs to be communicated before you gank right here. Because he's already level six. All the communication needs to be, because you know you're on a pink ward, is how long until you're level six. And then you don't gank literally until she hits level six and you'll be he'll be further up the lane and everything, and this is a hundred percent easy kill. But the fact 
is you guys still get the kill because he's way too cocky and stays too long but you need to make stuff simpler on yourselves so nothing is uh we don't have to waste summoners um unless it's an aggressive summer to make sure we get the kill but look he can just fend off so much easier because he's already level six and look at this giant wave you're fighting in too like this is just simple communication you guys did a really good job with your vision control you have two pinks over here this is amazing this is shit that like i've coached teams that are like diamond three plus that they don't they don't have this good of vision control early, early in the game but this is where your just communication is. How long until you hit six? Because he can, you can look in lane central and see all these minions, and know that he's going to get it very soon. So just clean up that communication, and you guys would literally, you'll get this kill anyway. Like I mentioned, because he's he's cocky. Um, but yeah, if you just did that, it would have been a lot simpler for you guys. Like there's no reason for him to still be staying. He should be going back at that point because the wave shoving too. Like, this is just him being really dumb. But just think of how much easier it could have been on YouTube as well if we would have just cleaned up our communication about everything. All right. Just going to look for kind of key points to talk about. I didn't write anything down as it was going, but... So we got a kill back, um, I believe it was top again, yeah. So you guys punish the, uh, you did a good job. This is what I was talking about earlier. You knew that he didn't have flash. And um, if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry, Aeoliosis, something like that. I'm just going to call you Aeoli. <laughs> um, he's level six now, you know he has his alt. So this is perfect time to come back and return gank. And GP's alt shouldn't be up yet, which it's barely not up yet. So this is a really good return gank. So this is again, um, and you also fucking great job having vision ahead of time. Um, you have to um, know now, like as an enemy jungler, a, a response to this, you being top, is whatever objective is open so he has priority mid his bottom lane just went back which you should be able to get communicated for them this means that you should not be staying for this plate you should just leave the plate to um, aeoli um, because this you're just giving up free reign of all of our vision control over here and this dragon right now if you stay and having um, Ocean Drake on a Nico Ezreal team is really strong for them. So this is a great return gank. And you already have vision everywhere, which is phenomenal. But you just have to, like, these plates are great, but they're such a bait sometimes where we just basically stay in a lane too long because we want that 160 gold. Like, so you're starting to be able to push back. Um, which is good, but it just take it takes you a lot longer. So the early parts of the game, the tempo is in their favor. But this is where we're staying in, up here really long, and you'll see that Nunu is just going straight for the dragon. Um, you may not have been able to get to it uh, in time, but your communication. This is where you guys got to think about cleaning, uh, like making um, your communication a lot clearer is when this happens then you immediately say bot shove um shove bottom and go get a ward onto dragon just so we can track it because a we also now should know that he can at least push back and keep her in lane if he if he wasn't trying to harass he could just clear these waves out a lot faster um but they're going to get this dragon for free now which sometimes it does happen, but I just want you to think about like how your your communication and what you when you get something like I keep mentioning when something good happens for the team, like what is their response going to be and what can we also do to turn it to even more? So, so immediately they just killed a dragon, so we should know um, that Noon is above us. So this is. Uh, a huge red flag. He's on a ward, everything. This is good. Um, this is... Um, 
so this is something you have to realize too, Mystic. You did a good job of getting there. You had a good job. You guys had vision and all this stuff. But if you look at your map, no matter what, uh, the lane was pushed to our side mid, so Nico's going to get there first, as well as their bottom lane can match up. So you're going to be two versus two, versus two, two versus three for a minute, and then it's going to turn into three versus four. So all you want to do basically is is just headbutt him out of here. You don't want to do the full combo. You just want to try to delay this so Central can uh, potentially get back to this side because you still have vision here. And I know this turns into a long extended fight, but again, this is going to turn into to, uh, three versus four very quickly. And remember, we're the ones at the disadvantage here. We have... Uh, flash on alley and all that stuff. We get the kill there, which is fine. And we're going to lose the alley back in return, which is still fine. But just basically forcing into uh, a 3 versus 4 there isn't the greatest thing in the world. I mean, all, you, all your objective at that point is to basically stop him from... Uh, stop him from getting the blue which all you have to do is do the headbutt because we got a kill but now AD carry doesn't have flash which is a big deal and they got a kill back oh that's the one that uh, I was messaging you about or you end up Dying solo mid and you had your alt up. This is ju you just have to alt yourself just to be safe. It doesn't matter. A this is the same thing as before too. Like the, you had no mana, you should just be going back. Plain and simple. You you get you back to lane fast enough that you shouldn't be risking this. You also should be knowing the cooldown of her ignite. Um, so this is this is you overstaying in lane because it's a cannon again. It's it sucks, but you already picked into uh, a matchup that's really tough um, and you're just trying to basically your champion is trying to synergize to really let Tristana go ape shit later so this is just overstaying you need to make sure that you don't and then just alt yourself just to be safe you don't even have to flash there if you alt yourself let's see here Oh, and this is something that um, really need to take notice of as well, is this. So, Tristan is really strong with two kills, but this CS difference, and I'm counting the spoils of war still, is really big still. So that's what, 70, 82 versus 104, down 22 CS. Then we're down 20, 19 CS here. We're down 16 CS here. And the lane that we put time into, which was good, it should have been our game plan, was get Riven really strong, is up 10 CS and two kills. So this is just something that should be a habit of you guys to keep track of because our CS numbers should not consistently be basically losing in four of the four of earth i'm sorry three of the rolls so we can't count support as a, a a farming measurement so this is um let's see 12 minutes into the game and we have really good vision control on the top side of the map which is where we should have it right now because we have the only lane that we really have a priority is top lane and you guys are setting up a tp play here which is really um really good but um and you have central going up here to cover but what your communication should immediately be when you tp is literally janna no flash and she just used her q and her alt so riven should just be going straight on her plain and simple because we don't want this we don't want this um tp to be wasted and Ezreal still has, we should know, he still has his flash. And I don't remember if he still has his E or not. We'll find out right now. 
but this is a really good job you guys setting this up the tp play and central being able to cover the the top lane so easy still has he literally still has his e and his flash so this is where communication is incredibly important this is the target all day q and alts down no flash this will be a one for zero um uh, TP play, but instead we're our communications off, so he literally just gets away, and then her Q comes back up, and they just disengage. So we lost our TP play there. It was a good setup. Just communication needs to be quicker. Jan is the target. No flash. Like always, be talking about their summoners ahead of time when you're setting up these plays, because you don't want to. It was a good play, but now look at the farm that we just talked about. Because we got nothing out of that, it's a it's an even um, it's an even lane and farm now, which is a is a big deal because GP scales really hard. So you get your alt off on this one so this is exact that was great you you're down two levels there which is brutal but you can't hesitate on stuff so that was a really good job by you that time and you should when you're down like this too you should more focus on your farm and not the harassing so instead of throwing bombs at her just try to clear the wave so she can't push you into the lane because they just create look at all this pressure they're creating on you over here if they're just in your your face basically just focus on pushing them back when you're in a bad matchup like this especially when you're down already too um let's see so this is the the next dragons coming up which is which is why that tp play failing was so much more important now a it was a good play B, you guys should have recognized that the Infernal Dragon was coming up within the five minutes of her TP. So you may have actually wanted to hold off for the TP play. So we could have made a play for this Infernal because Infernal is very important. Um, so it was a good play. Like I said, communication needs to be different. But you guys need to look at the bigger picture as well as literally within two minutes of that TP, uh, the Infernal Dragon's up. So now they have TP advantage on us. So we'll see how this transpires again. And then also anytime that you are um, positioning for a dragon, um, it's always best to try to be on the other side of the um, dragon, not the bottom side, on the mid side, because it's a good habit to get into. Because if, say, it's a Cloud Dragon, which we don't want, but they're posturing like they want to get it, you basically get force them to funnel onto this half, and then you guys can position mid-half, and you can try to break this turret, especially after 14 minutes, because the, the plating just fell. So it's a lot easier. It's just an, a simple trick, basically, when the Dragon's up around this time um, to get that mid-outer outer turret is just by your positioning at the dragon so but just a good habit for most dragon fights you want to position on the mid side if you can if you're the team that's in the driver's seat and you want uh and it's an important dragon like infernal then obviously you're going to be basically in the pit side that's fine just make sure that your wave management which is something that we will uh, talk about a lot um, your wave management needs to be taken care of where this we're not losing experience at the turret because this is huge just losing a wave of experience is bad for us so then this is where this is where it's um, really beneficial if we still had the TP so we can force stuff here around the infernal so we're just gonna let it roll I believe we get this kill, but we're so like disjointed and they also were grouped better. If you look at the beginning of the fight, Ali and Zillion weren't really grouped with you guys uh, completely. It was Trist and Kane. So we don't get the, we actually don't get the Ezreal. So it just makes it even worse. So now we still don't have the TP. You can see that um, Riven is running down here, which is perfectly fine. 
um, because she took care of the lane priority. She shoved it on him already, which is perfect. It's what you want to do. But now we're just in a terrible situation. Everything about this is just really bad for us. So this is why talking about uh, what we're going to do ahead of time, um, especially playing around bigger objectives, is so important. So that TP play, just going back to it, was a really good play, but it should have probably been saved because how how um, important this, this uh, global objective was to the whole team. So just think of that stuff. If a dragon's coming up that you guys don't really give a shit about, then go ahead and try to make those kind of plays. But you can see now, like, the score is 7 to 5, but they almost have a, a 4K gold lead just because of all the farm difference, too. So this is where it's really starting to pile up on you guys because they had priority mid lane. Um, bottom lane was probably just going to be even the whole time. You could have maybe got a kill level 3, but I still, I still doubt that it would have happened. Um, just because of the lane that you're playing versus is pretty elusive and she has good disengage tools plus shield. So just all this stuff stockpiling is how games get out of hand. So you guys really need to think about that stuff when the game's loading in too, like what your win condition is, what their win condition is, all that stuff. So you're going in um, really far ahead of... Um, Tristana here. I don't remember if we get the kill or not. I don't think so. But regardless, like they could have, they could have let you. Uh... Oh, he just TP back the lane. He could have TP down here and fought you guys as well. But now we're gonna trade basically uh, two for one, which is never a good thing. We never want to do that. I know Tristana got all the. The, uh, actually, Ali got one of the kills. Yeah, so it's it's not beneficial to just force like that. That's like that's solo queue mentality. Just force, force, force. You just you gotta make smarter decisions when you're doing stuff. If you would have done that when Tristana was closer to you, then it would have been perfectly fine. But you started off way too early uh, com in comparison to where she was. So, and this is where. Um, See, this is what I was talking about earlier, too. You know that they are back. You got a little bit deeper vision. This is great. This is the kind of shit that you guys need to do more often because you'll see that as the game goes on, our, our vision is starting to, to fizzle away, basically. You do a really good job with the vision in the early parts. Okay. So this is a good three versus two because we get to... Uh, um, our mid laner gets there first, which is perfect. We get two flashes out of it. So now this is where we could be talking about um, ways that we could potentially take advantage of them not having flash. And basically the easiest thing you guys could do if you felt like you're strong enough, which I, I don't really think you're stronger than them overall it's kind of close nico's really strong though if you have zillion alts up alt up then you might be able to fight it is yeah you guys would be forcing this because you just blew their flashes so you should um have somewhat an advantage the only the only difference in levels is nico has one level on uh, zillion But I know I understand it's a Nunu as well, and he's very good at controlling objectives, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but it's just like as soon as something good happens like that, you guys should be thinking, what can we do right now, or what can we do in the next two minutes, kind of thing uh, around whatever um, just happened. So even if you don't, if you give up the herald like you just did, you should realize as well. Um, like stuff about the vision. I don't remember if you get the kill top or not. I think you do. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. About, um, yeah, you do and he gets out. So that's good. Punishing and he just uses flash. So that's good. That's the kind of stuff you guys should be thinking about all the time. Good zillion alt. I think we die though. Yeah. 
we have to just realize like they're this is what i was talking about as well like he hits he's not at the the complete second item yet but frostborn already is is so brutal versus our team comp this is where they just start getting out of control and they get a lot out of this because they have herald and that's another thing we get a um always remember and that's why overstaying and stuff like we made a good play top but we we need to like just realize that kind of stuff too and also communicate like if we're making a play top then our immediate response should be in the bottom lane is the backup because we know that they're that they there's no mid turret right now no mid out of turret that they they should be making a play on you guys bottom because they know that um two of you guys are top lane basically and then this is something I wanted to talk about as well. Um, you did it this game. You have Sweeper. But game two, when you're on Jarvan, you don't get Sweeper, I don't think. I don't remember if you get it the entire game. You have to get it. But you guys also, especially when the game's starting to get out of your favor, we need a blue trinket. We need at least one blue trinket. Sometimes two is even okay. Because we need to be able to track these guys, especially with uh, Nunu. Nunu. And a Nico that can just camp bush on you guys, you need to you need to be able to walk into areas without worrying about dying, because dragon's coming up right now as well. So it's very important that you guys get the right trinkets at the right time. I always recommend uh, by the 20 minute mark you have your second um, trinket, whatever your second one is. 15 minutes for the jungler is always best to have the sweeper because unless you're Lee Sin. Lee Sin stays with the yellow trinket. But you need to start really controlling the vision um, around the 15 minute mark. And I don't, I'm not sure why you ended up going in here. We'd lose flash and a heal because you went in there right after. This is like you guys being frustrated or something now. That, so you guys just have to realize bad things can happen and you can still come out of it. You need to just think of how we can get resources. And this is a cloud dragon. This is the worst dragon there is. Just let them fucking have it. You don't need it. You got look up the gold difference all of a sudden. Just just uh, eight minutes ago, it was only 2k lead. So this is where you guys need to just slow down and start thinking about what's our win condition now and how can we get there. And your win condition is Tristana at this point. You need to be able to protect Tristana. Um, and you have to find a way to get Riven a flank basically to, to win the game too. She has to be able to get a flank on these guys so she can try to pop the Nico before uh, Nico gets off her alt because Ezreal's very elusive plus they have Janna. So it's very hard for you guys to get in there. And at this point of the game, um, I think you can still beat the GP one-on-one, -on -one, but it's still close because he's such a hard scaling champion. So this is um, something else we will talk about. I think in the second game more. You guys do a good job of getting vision control back. They're going to come out and clear it, which is perfectly fine. But you guys need to make sure you track this kind of stuff too, which is good. Just making sure we get vision back out there. And we know Riven has TP, so uh tristana should be going back up to top by now should be should be recalling and going back up there because riven has tp we need tristan on the baron side so she's going back now which is good so this is the hardest part of every game because you guys have a good team fighting um composition um, but it's really hard for you guys to get onto them because of the janna so this is why the most important part of the early game was really getting her like snowballing out of control because then your win condition could have been her split pushing. So a one four split where even if their four man group is strong enough, you guys have really good late game um, wave clear with these two right here. So it, unless they have Baron, you guys will be able to keep them off turrets very easily. Two um, Qs from Zillion as well as the auto auto attacks from Tristana you guys wave clear extremely fast and then they she can become a nuisance where they have to send a second person and obviously she is 
is um, ahead of the GP, but he's gotten all the uh, uh, neutral objectives, plus they're up three, tur uh, three turrets for global money. I don't remember if he got any plates either. So this is these are kind of things that are just snowballing back into their favor. So. And this, their their team is very hard to get onto. This is what's rough. And now Ezreal's really hitting a spike because he's finished the second item. He's got his boots and the the next part of like three items. He's insanely strong. This is why that Caitlyn ban was bad. And this this should have been uh, the ban if you guys typically go triple uh, AP. So the, this is this game's basically out of control at this point you guys would have to like i mentioned somehow get a, a flank from the riven riven just got a, a kill on the gp so she still was stronger than him but now they're going to get the baron um and then the game's going to be over basically so this is just stuff you guys need to um you had moments there where you got you could tell you were just frustrated because stuff started going their way a lot um so you just have to basically learn how to slow down in the bad moments of the game and even in the in the good moments and figuring out like how we can deny them more or get small advantages by advancing your vision and just making like of what I always say is what's next? What can we do next when something good happens or when something bad happens? So you guys need to start thinking about that in the game and if something bad's happening, you can still figure out ways to deny them resources or talk about your win condition still so these are just small things that uh, you guys will learn to do the more you play together I don't know how long you've been a team or anything I don't know if you've ever had a coach either but this is just small things uh, that you'll learn in time uh, that's it for this one I'm gonna do the game two next uh, and then I'll send this over to Don so you guys can watch them <laughs>